Good morning and welcome. We're gonna give folks a few seconds to migrate in from the waiting room. Good morning and welcome to Supervising for the Future. What does the future hold? I'm Amy Music with the partnership team for the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. A few housekeeping matters before we get started. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to you tomorrow along with the PowerPoint for today's presentation. So be on the lookout for those. If you just can't wait, you can download them right now from the handouts tab. I'd also like to draw your attention to the questions tab. If we have time at the end of the presentation, uh, Judy would be happy to go ahead and take your questions. So get them into you to get them in via the chat questions chat box. If you have any trouble viewing or hearing during the presentation, don't forget you will automatically be receiving a recording within 48 hours. So if you have to sign out and watch the recording, you won't miss a thing. With us today is Julie Sail Julie Judy Saylor of Prime Point, um, HRMS and Payroll. Um, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Judy. Hi everyone. I uh, hope you're doing well today. Um, today we're going to be discussing what the future holds for us in terms of supervising our staff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our objectives today are to look at what the current trends are, to discuss some of those HR things that are going to be, you know, a different nuance to them, uh, which performance evals and training, and then the latest compliance changes that we've seen come through. <clears throat> What we are seeing in the research and data is that em employees want more. 70% of employees surveyed felt that flexible working made the job much more attractive. They are specifically looking for jobs that do that. Now, we know there's lots of jobs that will never be able to be that level of flexible. They cannot be remote based on what they are. However, there are gonna be times where there it will be an opportunity to shift different employees or to give them the opportunity to be flexible. Um, everybody's looking for a work-life balance. And um, I said this several times at this point uh, in yesterday's communications, uh, work-life balance, there is no balance. You know, if you have a significant other, if you have children, your, your balance is not what anybody would ever want it to look like personally. However, there is a point where it is good it supports your family it supports your organization you know we have to come up with what that is going to be the best for us as individuals and for the workplace a uh, couple of the biggest things that we hear everybody's talking about the great resignation it's not over people are actively looking for jobs uh 94 of those who left their company in the past year don't regret it that is not because of COVID. That is because, because of COVID, they had time to sit and think about, what am I doing? Do I love my job? Do I love waking up to this every morning? Um, I'm one of those folks, I had 20 years in nonprofit and I wanted more, I wanted something different. I wanted to be involved differently in the workforce. So I changed. I changed at the same point that I had a child. That's what generated my change. Of, you know, the next generation right now is looking at it because we've had a big change. Uh, a lot of what we are seeing with folks is this concept of job fatigue. You know, they're in a job where they are not recharging their batteries. They're not learning. They're not stretching. They're not finding new challenges. Um, here at Prime Point, we do payroll. And we've had folks come and you know, they work for a couple years and then suddenly they're quote unquote bored. They're not bored. You know, what we find with them when we start to talk to people and ask questions is that they really want something that is not a routine. They want something that's going to challenge them. That's what we're seeing people looking for in the workplace. So if you have the ability to give those challenges and to support your staff, you may have great employees that are just sitting in the wrong seat right now and we need to ask those questions. For the future, 85% of the jobs that will exist by 2020, 2030, haven't even been invented yet. And I started looking what those titles were and, and lots of them are in the technology packet, which that might not be what your company is. However, that is gonna dramatically impact how your company functions. 
And so we are seeing where our future of work is who's going to be doing the work. And, and there's this collaborative opportunity here. You know, we talk about artificial intelligence from every movie that, you know, every sci-fi movie you've ever seen. But, you know, chatbots are AI. They think. Um, Google, not for nothing, is constantly thinking and listening to us. It responds to the things that we ask or we do or that we have a conversation with someone about. There is this natural process of, of what has been termed the man-machine relationship. This has actually always occurred. It's just now we've identified it and we're able to shape it. Uh, that man-machine is a, an option where, you know, there's a reciprocal movement. The man does something, the woman does something, the machine interacts as a result of that. Um, it, in this photo, you know, it reminded me I have a German shepherd and it's like training a dog, you know, he understands, he knows, he knows what to react to. And so that's that man machine, that relationship becomes a collaboration. And that's what we're going to see as time moves forward. Uh, how are we going to get the work done? Traditional full-time and part-time employees, uh, leased employees, gig employees, crowdsourcing. We've been seeing this for several years. It's now becoming far more mainstream. You know, if you do anything in marketing, folks are crowdsourcing all kinds of items. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. When and where it gets done. As you know, based on what it is, it could be done anywhere. Okay. Uh, there are boundaries that had naturally occurred with technology and so forth. And, and those have diminished quite a bit. Uh, we know 5G isn't everywhere yet, but the minute it is, we're going to see a whole new level of technology and interconnectedness. Uh, it, it gives us the opportunity to work differently and to work anywhere. That becomes a problem when we start looking at some of the compliance issues. And we'll talk about that as we move forward. The nine to five workday is becoming fluid. You know, um, some of the some of my colleagues that have young children, uh, you know, born 2019, 2020, and so forth. And at Prime Point, we've worked with them to be able to say to them, um, your schedule can be flexible. You know, do what you need to do around your child. So we have folks who are working overnight, who are are you know sleeping potentially during the day, and then with their children when they're home from school, and so. You know, we're seeing that level of flexibility and working. However, what you have to look at is with that level of uh, flexibility, what are your tax laws? Are they in another state? What are those pieces that could become something that we have to look at in terms of global employment? You know, is, do you have staff that work, you know, off con the continental US? We've got to take everything now from a position of workforce planning. We've got to look at our infrastructure and say, in 10 years, is this going to work? If it's not, start doing something about it now. We, we all are going to need a strategic plan to say, okay, what's our next steps? What's the next thing that we are looking to do for ourselves as an organization? Uh, when we look at what are the technologies, you almost need to drill into the departments. You know, is it, we need additional technology or is it that we need additional training? Is it that um, job work items should change? You know, do a job analysis. Should something be moved to another department to, because it ends up in that wheelhouse and it would be better for them to do the prep work and so forth? Um, what is your, your value proposition to employees? What are you doing for them? I know we pay them. And, and we care about them and, and many organizations do a really great job with them. In 10 years, do you still want the same people? In 10 years, do you want them to still be fully engaged? What, what value do they bring to the organization? What value do they bring to you? And so we've, we've got this period where we're seeing this change and we're looking at attracting and retaining, growing, you know, future oriented. It's a lot all at once. And I find with, with lots of clients that I interface with, they're not thinking about it until we've come to them. We've got to get ahead of this, all of us as an organization, as organizations. So I know remote work is one of those things that, that folks are not 100% excited about. I did some research 
as I do with every one of these PowerPoints. And I found at least a half a dozen articles that showed that remote savings are an opportunity for the employer as well as the employee. So hear me out. If your organization has that opportunity, you know, you could save you as the, as the company can save almost $11,000 per year. They're finding that remote employees, depending on what it is that they do, are willing to take a 5% pay cut just to work from home. You know, and so think about that. You know, does the job merit working at home? Is it acceptable for it to work at home? Whatever it is, clearly food services is not going to be doing that. Um, you can, as an organization, reduce overhead. We saw during 2020, many very large companies, such as Google themselves, uh, cut leases and stopped, you know, moved everybody off site, re reduced the lease. They cut overhead dramatically, you know, um, not for nothing. We're seeing Amazon transition and, and not use as many warehouses now. They're, they've got uh, designated points that are, that are going to be their transition spots. And so they've kind of looked to reduce overhead. Um, with savings for the employer, retention is huge. And we will talk about that. Uh, if you don't have to replace staff, you know, that saves you six to nine months because it takes six to nine months to get staff up to snuff when someone leaves and you bring in someone new. One of the big things here with Prime Point, obviously, we're a technology company. We found that staff were much, much more productive at home. And, and why is that? Um, they're not necessarily going to the water cooler, maybe. They're not interrupted. Uh, you know, the calls are different. Um, the timing could be different. It could just be that they kind of set up their routine better. And so those are big. You know, $11,000 per employee is huge. That's benefits for a lot of organizations. On the other side, the employee saves. You know, they don't have to spend a, a boatload of money on their wardrobe, transportation, childcare costs, two of the biggest things out there that, you know, people lose a lot of money with. Um, time. As, a, as an employee got to work from home, I gained a whole hour a day because I wasn't traveling back and forth to the office. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot to you, but for me, it is. It was huge for my family. And one of the biggest things they found is that people weren't eating out. And so they weren't spending that money. You know, they were at home making a sandwich, having lunch. Um, lots of folks finally were able to have lunch with their kids or their spouses. You know, we, we didn't do that before because we weren't all together. So there is some potential positives to remote working it, it there there are other options too obviously but there are, you know that are not so positive but there are opportunities to make it equitable for both when surveyed the top priorities that we're finding right now for the future of work is retention recruitment and the culture of the company culture is our killer right now there are typically five reasons why workers want to quit. Toxic culture, low salary, poor management, lack of a healthy work-life boundaries, and not allowing remote work. Now, if you're on TikTok, you will see there are multiple folks who do the lack of healthy work-life boundaries videos daily. And someone represents the manager and someone represents the employee. And there's the banter that goes back and forth. As I have watched these things, because yes, I'm on TikTok, because there's lots of information out there. Um, I laugh because I could tell you the name of the manager that they were talking to in my past life. And so these, these things are very clear out there. And these are the reasons why people are leaving. It's not just remote work. It's, it's not just that piece. Um, people don't leave jobs people leave bad managers. They, they leave people that are mean, that are abusive, that are, are angry all the time, that nothing's ever good, everything's bad. You know, they leave that management group. They don't want to be engaged in that. They want better for themselves. The other big thing we're hearing right now is quiet quitting or quiet firing. Now, folks, I have had folks say, oh, is this new? No, this is not new. We just didn't have a label for it like this. The younger generations come up with these really great labels lately, and, and it's, I'm sure it's you know social media friendly. TikTok is talking about quiet quitting and quiet firing like it is their job. And in the past, you didn't 
tell somebody you were quiet quitting. There was not a, a this phase to it. We did not go, oh, well, we're quiet quitting. No, you decided I hate this place or I need something more. And you started looking for another job. That was quiet quitting up until last year. Quiet firing is not new. We've always done it, especially in HR. We are the ones who have to say, okay, unfortunately there's no raise for you this year, or unfortunately we're, we're, be, we're changing your job description. You know, unfortunately you were passed over for a promotion. That was HR's responsibility to give that message. The managers might've made the decision, but we're the ones who had to give that message. This is not new. So you're gonna hear it and you're gonna hear young people think, you know, they, this term was created. No, you can say to them, no, this is how I've gotten every job in my life. I've decided I needed to move on. And most people, shockingly, take the day off to go interview. And with quiet quitting, we're finding folks that are having this, they took a vacation day. Uh, yep, because they wanted to go to an interview. Like you have to go to the interview to actually find other jobs. 60% surveyed of individuals from, um, sorry, I lost it, are looking for another job who did not offer them remote work or hybrid. 54% um, of all of those surveyed who were born after 1989 are completely unengaged from their company. They're done. And and you probably can see in their actions that they're done. And it, it may be that this employee was great and it may be that you really want them back. So you need to do something about it. Oh, sorry, it was Gallup poll. My apologies. Why do you wanna keep them? Because retention matters. As I said, six to nine months of a person's salary to replace them. Why? Because a salaried employee that person needs to be trained. They don't come to you and know everything, the culture, the product, they don't. They could come from another entity that does the same exact thing you do. However, Bob in accounting or Sue at the desk or you know, Bradley, you name it, they don't know those interactions. They don't know that connectivity. They don't know how those folks work, okay? It is on average right now taking 36 days from the higher point to train a new, to get to training for a new employee. That's a, that's a, that's a month. You don't have the time to keep the engine going and give up a month of somebody who is in a critical job position. You know, accounting, finance, um, supply chain, you just don't have that. And, we talked about in in a couple different op places that I've been. There was a conversation about, um, you know, who is the the pivotal person in an organization, and in one such case where I had worked, it was literally the guy who ran the loading dock because he was connected to the sales guy, and he was connected to the external group, and when that person left, that relationship was gone, and so. You can't replace that relationship. You can't replace all the times they've talked about, you know, their kids and their spouses and what's going on and how are they doing and checking in with each other. That, I know, it's people things. You don't have the time to, to replace all of that, to get that all into place. So Gallup estimated that a disengaged employee cost you $3,400 for every $10,000 of salary. So if you're paying somebody $60,000, you're, you're, Taking your you're losing at this battle in terms of having to replace somebody. So retention is critical. Reasons employees stay, job stability, you know, and, and that is connected to I'm trained and I understand my job. I have I've been in organizations where someone had a job, they had a title, they had a degree, they understood what they were supposed to be doing. They really didn't. And they needed to be trained from the organization to understand the organization's culture and, and drive, okay? Um, people like to do meaningful work. I teach at Ryder University because I like young people and, and my goal, as I keep telling them, is that once they all graduate and have full-time jobs, I'll be able to retire, right? But it's more than that. It's that I know that these educated young people will go on to do great things 
greater than I've ever done and keep us propelled forward. They'll, they'll keep us moving forward in business. They'll keep us moving forward in, in their own career growth. It's important. It creates this strong support system of for all of us. Every company needs it. So the, the two that are critical to this, that kind of blend into company culture, is having close relationships with coworkers and limited drama. There's always drama, there's always something. And somebody always has an issue with something, but a lot of those are noise, right? Somebody's complaining about something. I try to tell folks every day if someone's complaining that, you know, you're just the next person. They might've fought with their spouse on the way out the door, the dog might've ate the shoe, the kid didn't do the homework, you're next. And so I'm angry, I'm frustrated, you get it. That kind of drama you can fix, but having those relationships at work, you know, your work buddy, your work BFF, um, somebody you might go to lunch with, those keep you connected. And, and it gives you those allies that you want. No matter the level of worker that you are, you could be the president and you have an ally and you know who that person is. You could be the person at the loading dock. You could be the person in, in you know, administration somewhere, but you've got somebody that you can go to and be like, dude, I'm tired. Oh, I got another coffee. And you have that connectivity with people in your organization. Retention, items that you can do. Um, lots of folks are doing what they're calling stay interviews. And, you know, 2020 and 2021 changed a lot of things. So they're literally going back to employees and interviewing them and saying, is this what you want to be doing? Do you, do you have other aspirations? Do you want training? Do you want to go to college? Do you want to learn another skill of some sort? And employees are really liking this because maybe they've been in the same, you know, spot for the last five years and, you know, they want to expand their horizons. And if you're the one that's willing to open that door for them, you get to keep them. Um, you want to train people, okay? You want to listen to them. And and sometimes the listening is, yeah, it's a little bit of noise. It's it's complaining. There is something in there, though, that you would need to get to the root of and figure, why are we complaining about this? What is the actual problem? Uh, be good to them. That does not mean let them walk all over you. That means, hey, how you doing? Check in with people. Uh, Prime Point is the first organization that I've ever worked for where the president and the vice president will walk around daily to go and say hi to people and, and check in and see how the kids, how's the husband, what you doing? And because we, lots of the staff here are only in here one day a week, they're checking in to make sure that the whole team is whole and that we're able to do our jobs and we're feeling good about things. Recruitment, recruitment is taking on a new life, right? So if, if you don't have an online application at this point um, and you're still using paper, you gotta catch up. Employees are applying for jobs on their phone. Um, Prime Point, like every other payroll company, does online application and onboarding. 85% of what we're seeing is all being done on an iPhone or an Android or, or something of the like. They're not sitting down at a computer anymore to do these things. You need to have an orientation and you probably need to expand that orientation now because your new folks coming in have a different perception of what work looks like. So you've got to make sure that you get them fully engaged right from the get-go. Uh, several of the organizations that I, I've researched and talked to are doing coaching or mentoring. So you have a, a mentor for six months and that's somebody that you have coffee with once a week and you chat with them about, well, I don't understand this and why is he like this? And, you know, they can ask those questions one-on-one -on -one in a safe setting to understand what's going on, right? Because yeah, this person's job is different. So their schedule is different. And well, I wouldn't have known that had I not asked about something like that. The, the coaching and mentoring helps you to build this loyalty and this engagement with people. And that's what we're seeing that we need out of recruiting. Now we've got to get folks to, to stay. In the hybrid model and remote, please make sure your company is presenting itself in the best way possible. Um, it, it, and then of course, train whoever is going to be using the technology. For any of my tech folks out there, I'm sure you have seen it where uh, the technology fails, they can't get the voice, you can't hear things. How many times are you on a Zoom and you're doing the, your mic's muted, your mic's muted, your mic's muted. 
make sure that the, these folks are on point with what this is okay it's it's not it's not hard it can be hard it is technology so at any point given time it could fail or your wi-fi will go out so make sure that you know whoever's doing the interviewing they're ready technologically live the benefits to recruiting remotely well you got you can have remote employees that are that have a flexibility if you have a first or second or third shift in your technology group, you can run the gamut of finding people. Um, recruiting remotely increases your talent pool. You know, for Prime Point, we have folks that live in South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, Pennsylvania. You know, we've got this broader group and we're able to attract those folks because we acknowledge that we can have remote workers. Uh, it can improve your diversity. You know, we think of, oh, well, people are going to come and hire us. You know. And, and we're wanting to improve our diversity all the time. Well, how do you do that? You need a bigger pool sometimes. And, and you have to look at what are your sources of where folks are coming from. So that helps with your online recruiting and, and recruiting remote employees. Uh, it can improve, improve retention. You know, If you have a, one whole team that's remote and they're happy as can be, they're gonna stay because they're, they're getting what they need out of the job. And, they're getting that education maybe, or they're getting you know, the experience, and you're getting a great worker who, who wants to be there. It doesn't mean everybody can do it. The best practices for recruitment, no matter what, embrace and talk about work appropriately with all the staff. It doesn't mean just the remote workers. If you single one group out or another, we, we do call that discrimination and somebody would figure that part out. Um, Change your approach to recruitment. You know, uh, who is it? PwC, um, Price Waterhouse. It, in my college kids group, they um, Price Waterhouse literally has online how to ace their interview. They give you all the steps. They tell you what to do. They tell you how to dress. They put everything on their website. They are hiring people who actually go to the website and do all the steps they're supposed to do. It's crazy, right? They want to be sure you're going to be able to follow directions. Then they want to be able to say, what are your skill sets, right? So we see with lots of agencies now that are supporting hiring, um, you want, may want to do pre-employment skill testing. You're, you're not seeing this person, you know, a resume is a resume. It's, it's still a document. So pre-employment testing gives us the chance to go, okay, does this person have the skill set they are professing to? Uh, the big, the, uh, the last big piece that we're seeing when it comes to the best practices is social media screening. And I think I've been in four different meetings in the last two weeks, and this is becoming the, one of the biggest buzzwords and for a variety of reasons. Uh, one, because we did see a phase where you know, folks were on opposite sides of the fence and they, they can be vehement on either approach. And so, you know, we want to be sure that whoever we're bringing into our organization, if they're espousing things that are not aligned with our organization or our mission, they might not be for us. And that's okay. Everybody will find their niche in life at some point. 61% of what we call high strive uh, of employees are high strivers and and so you know we've gone from the recruiting phase into the supervising phase um 52 percent of those employees are putting in more effort compared to two years ago and and why is that working from home sometimes really gives you the ability to work smarter right because you're in your own space you're in your own system you're not driving to work and disconnected from things and you know you're, you're in this this mode and so folks are putting more effort out you know they sometimes it's not uh i'll say fair uh because folks are often concerned with i have to check in i have to check in i have to check in and there are unfortunately managers who we would call a micromanager who give folks that impression that i need to be able to see what you're doing all day and so they may be putting out more effort for that but for a lot of them they're putting it out because they're not as stressed you know if you don't i suffer from road rage if i don't have to drive i'm way better by the time i start my day and i'll start my day earlier because i'm i'm up invigorated kids off to school etc so 
there's there's lots of reasons why folks are able to put more effort in and want to put more effort in. Uh, of those high strivers who who you know they're your workhorses, they get the job done. People, 37% of them are already looking for a new job or are planning to look for a new job in the next six months. And why? It could be because they're ready for their next challenge. So if we're supervising them and they're a great employee, we may want to look at and talk to them about what is your challenge? What is the next challenge you want? Supervising for all three groups is a lot of the same. Check in. You have to talk to people. You have to talk to them if they're hybrid, you have to talk to them remote. Here at Prime Point, each team has their own you know, chat set up. And so they're talking all day long. Oh, did you finish this? Okay, I got this. Okay. And so they're keeping tabs on on making sure everything's getting done and their managers are able to jump in and go, hey, I'll take care of this. You know, they get that support. Ask questions. You know, we do this with our kids and our spouses. Hey, how was your day? They ask more questions. Um, have and show some empathy. Some folks had a really hard time with all of this. You know, not everybody has a thicker skin or or that level of resilience. And you know, being working potentially hybrid or remote sometimes could be harder for somebody, not better. We have staff here at Prime Point that are here five days a week because that makes them feel best. Working from home does not work for them. So they're here all week. And that's great. They still get to see all the teams. They're they're getting what they get out of what they need out of it. The folks who are hybrid are getting what they need out of it. And that's that's a that's a good leader opportunity for us. Uh, I talk to my college kids a lot about being leaderful. Um, we know lots of leaders, right? And we know throughout history, there are folks who were leaders who were not very leaderful. They were not very nice people necessarily. So being leaderful means I'm not just gonna talk about the things that make me a leader. I'm going to do them. I'm going to be a leader. Um, I, I've worked for a president here where you know, we were on site working with the client and he got down, you know, on his hands and knees is helping sort documents for them to help get the process done sooner. That's leaderful. And NJBIA shows this on a regular basis for us. So it's it's just a reminder, shall we say. Um, adopt goals. You know, you need goals. Your employees need goals. It's, it's just it makes things more cohesive because now we know what we're doing. Right, we're all rowing the boat in the same direction to get to the same place. Uh, have good communication, you know, build trust, have clear processes. We, we, it doesn't matter where I've ever worked, communication is a problem. And most of us will say at some point during a week, why didn't they communicate this to me? Or why didn't I communicate this to someone else? We know we got to practice that better. And, and this is a really good opportunity to do that. Uh, the difficulties that we were talking about with, with hybrid and remote folks is a lot of hybrid and remote folks have that sense of disconnection from the team. Um, some folks feel isolated. Some folks want to feel isolated though. So you've got to decide is, you know, and talk to them, is this okay or are you not okay? Um, in our current environment, if there are rapid changes, we expect a rapid response often. You know, the day, Prime point when fully remote was March 20th, 2020. And, you know, at that point, we were all saying to each other, oh, it'll be two weeks. Well, no. And our tech team rolled out, you know, within that weekend, Monday morning, all of this technology to support us to be able to do all the things that we needed to do. We get used to quick response with some of our, our agency groups and, and some of the technology folks. So, we have to be careful of this and make sure that we're setting the right expectation. You know, oh, we've had a rapid change. You know, we've we've had a change in staffing. We're not going to have a rapid response because we're want to we're going to want to hire the right people for the right seats. Okay. Um, there, one of the bigger issues with folks who are hybrid or remote is that lack of face time. You know, it, in the workplace. You see your managers, your managers see you, you have engaging conversations, you get to chat with them. You don't necessarily have that with hybrid or remote. And so some folks will lose out on the opportunity to move up the ladder because they're not available 
to see the managers or, or leadership on a regular basis. And that's difficult and it's not an easy fix. Um, some things to think about with supervising and hybrid and remote uh, is, is workman's compensation given to them for working at home. You have to define that in your policies. Uh, clocking in and out from outside the office. You know, the majority of your payroll companies should have some ability if your staff have already been clocking in and out. Uh, does the computer do that for them? As soon as they log in, do you know? Um, professional etiquette and dress code for video conferencing. I cannot believe I had to say this, but I have been on conferences where, you know, someone's in their hoodie and, you know, the background is, is not really what anybody else would want to see. And so I have to teach this to the college kids. So I thought I probably should add it in here because you want to look at what are your staff doing? You know, is everybody on the same page? Are they using the blurry background? Are they using a logo behind you? Um, do you have in, in the, uh, the ability or the requirement to reimburse employees for any costs associated with telecommuting? And it may not sound like much, but as we continue to move forward, we will see people wanting that as a benefit. Uh, lots of of benefits come out that are targeted to one entity or another. And this is something that is starting to creep up the list of, well, if I'm going to work from home, I'm going to need to increase my bandwidth. I'd need, you know, it's X number of dollars to do this. Uh, and then the one of the my major issues that you will see, um, which is a huge, you know, conversation for any organization is maintaining that confidentiality of company information and security concerns. We have seen hacking all the way to Equifax for Pete's sake. You know, Equifax, Facebook, there are hacks done every day in the hundreds, I'm sure. And so how are your systems protected? Are, do you have redundancy? Do you have a full backup offsite? Do you have multiple backups offsite? You know, how do you keep people out? Ransomware has been atrocious and it has definitely damaged lots of organizations. So how are you, what are you doing about this? Because once someone is working from home, the ability for things to get into their network is easier because they are on their home Wi-Fi or they're plugged into their modem. And a person's level of security is not necessarily the same as what your organization's level of security is. For out-of-state remote workers, you can tell them, they need to tell you if they move, okay? There are tax obligations that have to be paid. They need to tell you that they've moved to another state. There are new tax forms you have to look at. Um, workman's comp and unemployment may be different depending on the state. And, and I don't have a ton of particulars here because each state has a different set of rules, okay? The if you're if they're a wage issue, they could be required to make more money in a different state. Uh, and then are they eligible in the other state for paid sick leave? What's the difference between those two? And a lot of folks we saw move out to more rural areas during the pandemic. Well, you know, there's only so many states that have a lot of that kind of space potentially. And so, you know, for us in Jersey, you know, you got New York, you got Jersey, you got Pennsylvania, you got Delaware. As people started to spread out, those paid sick leave, there's, there's, you know, paid sick leave for the state you're in, the one that you work from, and then there's more, there's others around that. Supervising productivity has changed. Uh, Pre-2020, it was self-reported worker data. It was worker activity data. I could go and look and say, okay, how many cases did you close? How many products did you implement? You know, what were those things that you accomplished that I can see in a week's time? Now, um, folks are looking to and are being more productive because um, they work when they want. You know, you. Here at Prime Point, there are times that I was sitting in front of the TV and I was working on something because I could, you know, and I was like, you know, if I just give this 10 more minutes, I feel like I get further and I'd be better off for tomorrow morning. Oh, okay, sit at the computer. News is on in the background and I'm, I'm typing away. Um, folks work where they want. You know, you could, there were times, as we all know, with the screen saver of the, the tree and the palm tree in the background, um, folks were at the beach working. 
it, it didn't hurt anyone necessarily as long as they were working. And so, you know, we've got to kind of balance that and make sure we're not penalizing someone because of the wrong reason. The best practices for this is use technology to your advantage. Always be consistent. You have to be consistent. It has to be consistent across the board for all of your staff. The technology piece is the piece that is so critical. Um, you've got, you know, Microsoft Avast. There's, there's probably a hundred different entities you could look up for your type of organization. You need things that are going to block the viruses, that are going to look at suspicious activity, that are going to have an advanced firewall, um, that are going to be able to protect folks' webcams. Okay, you know we're all on webcam right now. You can all see me. That's great. Um, we don't want somebody getting in and getting any other information. Um, avoiding fake and dangerous websites. We have. I have seen organizations, unfortunately, and I get these emails regularly. I work at a payroll company. I will get a pay, I will get an email request from my president or my vice president that says, I'd like to talk to you about some expenditures that we have to go through. When can you meet? And that's a you know fishing hook, shall we say. Um, I don't have anything to do with expenditures. I don't have anything to do with money. So you you know, I go up and I look at the email and I go, oh, yep, that's that's spam. Click the button. Uh, I get the email often that says, Can you please change my routing numbers for my paycheck? I don't touch payroll. You know, we've, we've got those gap principles here. I don't touch payroll. So someone sending it to me, they just don't know what I do here. And that that's great because now I can go and alert the right people, but you need to be able to protect your staff. And so you need to test them on it, quite frankly. Uh, the NJCCIC, which, which I only recently came in contact with, is the Cybersecurity and Communication Integration Cell. It is a division of the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security. It is a free membership. I said free, right? Free is awesome. This organization will alert you anytime a significant um, alert or occurrence has happened within the technological and communication areas. Say, so the one I'm showing you here is one that literally just came up in August 15th, 2022. And it is this direct deposit information one. And so the NJCC I see sends you an alert every time something pops up. Uh, today's email that I got talked about iPhones and the ability for someone to get into them and hack into your passwords, um, your banking and contacts. And so, if you you can go and register at their website they will start sending you these emails and then you will know the minute something happens that is imperative to protecting your organization from cyber attacks from hacking and from those things they give you the names of things they give you the times it is and i didn't know about this until just recently it has become a it's a very interesting read to me for someone who is doing presenting but it also has, is educating, and I'm starting to send it to other people so that they know, you know what's coming up and so forth. Uh, next, we move into performance evaluation. Um, have a witness if you need one. You know, As an HR professional, I am always looking to protect everybody in the space. You might need a witness. Uh, you're educating the employee, hopefully, about their behaviors. You are helping them to identify strengths and weaknesses. You're, you're looking to chart a course for their future. That doesn't mean they're staying always. It just means that you're working towards that. Um, it does send a message that people care. And that's really what they wanna know. They wanna know that you actually care about what they do for you. In the remote world, you're gonna use technology. You know, you can see what someone's doing. Here at Prime Point, you know, our cybersecurity folks can look at my computer at any time. It is their property legally. Um, even on my personal computer, if my uh, Prime Point email is open or my other Prime Point tools are open, they can look at those. They cannot look at my personal things. You are going to want to improve communication on this. Okay. What the biggest thing? No surprises. If you are sitting down with someone once a year and that is the first time they hear that you have a problem with what they're doing, you have a problem. There should be no surprises. There, there should have been a, a 
conversation, a written warning, those items. You cannot go into someone's performance review and go, well, I'm really disappointed in and fill in the blank. They should know up front what they're walking into. You need to be prepared. They need to be prepared. If there is a specific project you want to talk about, if there's a specific occurrence you want to talk about, you need to give them a heads up. They need to be able to come with whatever it is that they need to come with to talk to you about it. Uh, ask, speak carefully and ask good questions. Speaking carefully is, is the um, ask more questions. You want them to talk. You want them to uh, tell you what's going on. You want them to give you the information. The more you talk, the less they're talking and you won't know what's necessarily going on. That's the listen more than you speak, okay? Give specific examples. Someone says, you know, they didn't complete this project. What's the name of the project? It may have been taken off their hands. You don't know. So have specifics, know the background of it. Our, our big item is the SMART goals. And with SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Um, achievable's big. You know, I've had folks uh, in my past experience where, you know, they would say, I'm, I'm going to, you know, do $800,000 in sales this year. Really? In the current economy on, you know, XYZ products on, uh, on a product that is, you know, n not in the mainstream. What do you mean? How are you going to do that? make sure that they're setting a goal and that you're engaged in that goal with them. Okay, so it's specific. You're going to reach X number of clients or you're going to work on X number of projects. Um, you're gonna meet all the milestones. It's measurable. Did you meet your milestones and the dates that we had defined? You know, is it is it relevant to this person's job? If there are projects or goals set for them that do not model what is in their job description, you need to go back and revisit that. You 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 want if um, or you need to go change your job description and, and negotiate that change because that's going to be important. Time bound is always critical because if I you know if I give you 30 days, it's going to take 60. So you put your time bound in, you put your milestones in, knowing that you may have to make adjustments. Training, 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 training. The biggest thing is evaluate your training needs. Things have changed, and and we all know that. But sometimes we forget, we got to ask the staff, are you confident in, you know, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, what, you know, the, pro the program that you utilize, the internet, whatever. Uh, look at their job descriptions and, and, and sit with HR and go, okay, well, they're supposed to be doing X, Y, Z. Do they have the training to do that? Do they have the training for the program they need? Do they have the expertise? Do they need something more? Make sure you're covering all the bases. <clears throat> in the hybrid remote model, if you can, have the staff come in once a month. If if you've got folks who are still, you know, feeling medically fragile, have it outside. Like, come up with a plan, make it happen, because that connectivity helps everybody. Um, obviously, you can do webinars. You've seen thousands of them, I'm sure, at this point since 2020. Prioritize the soft skills uh, in I teach a career management class, as I was talking about, and the number one thing that businesses who come in to speak to my students about is their soft skills. How do you speak to people? You know, how, what, how do you lead a presentation? How do you lead the room? How do, you know, those things that aren't necessarily something I can hand them a textbook and say, okay, go read this so you can do it. Uh, don't forget about your leadership training. You know, if, if you're the president or the vice president, you're, you still need that, right? You are, are better every time you recharge your batteries and, and training for yourself does that. It gives you that recharge sometimes. Uh, customize the training by the role of department. It, it may be something specific that needs to happen for one group or another. So make sure they're getting that those specifics. Uh, Self-directed learning is definitely an option. Make sure there's an interaction of some sort. The self-directed learning sometimes can be a video. And uh, what I have seen with folks to make it interactive is there's a video and a couple of our clients do it where they, they have a workflow they send to them, they do the training, whatever that might be. And then there's like four questions afterwards they have to answer. You know, that opportunity to go, did you watch it all or did you do something else while it was playing kind of moment. Our compliance changes. 
uh, there have been quite a lot. And, you know, these are the biggest ones so far that, that came out in the last year or the last three months at this rate. Um, the expansion of the family leave and anti-discrimination notice requirements, that's, you know, not going to be rocket science for you. For those of you with vehicles, you, you need to um, provide notice if you are going to track the work vehicle. And the second part is you cannot track the employee. And I know that sounds dumb, but there are two different things. If you put something on an employee that tracks them, you can no longer do that. You can put it in the vehicle and track the vehicle because that you own potentially or you lease. We all know about minimum wage. Uh, we all know about you know age discrimination and so forth. The One of the bigger pieces we are seeing is the CRC form came out and it has given us the interim guidance. This right now is to handle the wire situation, okay? And so this is a two, three page form. Uh, on the previous slide, there's a link for it I put there for you. You would need to identify someone in your organization who is going to be the keeper of the form and the observer for the form. That person can be HR, it can be a manager, it needs to be in someone consistent and at a level of authority in theory. You would fill out all the specific details, the segments that you end up filling out. One is about the physical signs and symptoms. You're gonna circle all that apply, right? Is someone's face, you know, flush, pale, sweaty face, etc.? cetera? Um, are their eyes closed? Are their eyelids droopy? The next section is on behavioral indicators. What are their actions? What are they saying? Those pieces. Um, next is a description of their actions or behaviors. Write it out. You're going to be giving all of this information. You, this can be done post-accident. Was there an accident that has caused this now to be a form that you need to complete? You're going to interview the employee. Excuse me. And then after that, there is a checklist to go to reread through your steps, come fill that checklist out to determine whether or not you're sending this person for texting, testing. Now, the catch with this is, it is not specific to cannabis. If you think someone is under the influence of alcohol, you use the same form now. We're, we're seeing that they have made this not specific, so now it can be used in the broader sense, okay? And so you have to think about, now I need to know who's gonna be my person who is gonna be in charge of this. This is right this second, the interim guidance, it is to take the place right now of the wire. It could change, but you can start using this today, okay? So one of the big issues we've had as a result of all of our, our crazy lives is FMLA, all right? So Sherm gave this great example that I saw, and I saw this, this really does hit the nail on the head. You know, we've got Terry who works um, at a te our Texas-based company, right, which is great. Terry, unfortunately, has a debilitating medical condition. As a result of 2020, he decided life is too short, so they're going to take their life and their family on the road, and they're going to live in an RV and move from state to state, all right? So in the summer, they're in Florida. In the fall, they're in Massachusetts. In the winter, they're in Jersey. Why? I'm not sure, but you get the drift. If he needs leave, what is he eligible for? And before you start thinking about this, don't. It's You're gonna have to do it as a person at a time, quite honestly, because it will depend on what state they're in, what leave they might be eligible for, and if they're eligible at all. Because first, the organization with itself, right, our Texas-based company, would have to have 50 employees working within a 75-mile radius. Okay. Is there state-paid family medical leave? Okay. The employee's residence is not their work site. Even though he's driving around in this RV, that's not considered his work site, right? You can work from home. That's still not considered your work site. If we all recall, it's a question of what work site do you report to? And if, for example, our Texas-based company has a slew of folks who are now gonna work remotely and not necessarily within that 75 mile radius, this organization may end up 
uh, not getting FMLA any longer. So we've got to look at, you know, work from home and, and flex place and telecommuting and understanding it's the work site you report to that's going to matter whether or not you're eligible for FMLA. And you're going to see more of this coming out because we're, we're seeing an adjustment and I, I would hazard a guess that there will be an additional adjustment because of all of the telecommuting and remote workers. The payroll laws, biggest thing about payroll and compliance right now is if you have employees in different states, make sure you're using the correct form. I have looked at three different court cases where individuals did not have the correct forms filed and they were fined and now you know they're taking the company to court because the company didn't tell them they had to do new forms. And, you want to be sure you look at everybody's address and make sure they're filing that the correct tax forms. The overtime rule changes. The new one, the next set is due in October. It's changed. A few days ago, it was at fifty thousand dollars. Now the threshold has gone from thirty-five thousand to a potential of sixty-two to eighty thousand, and that's huge. Obviously, that we're outside of that fifty thousand dollar range. That puts a lot more folks in that window for potential overtime. The duties test they're looking at is the California standards test. And, and I know lots of folks you know, have different opinions on California. I kind of can see why they're looking at it because for California standards, 50% of an employee's time is spent solely on performing exempt duties. So you're a manager. You definitely are managing people and that's more than 50% of your time. If you are not managing anyone or, or you're managing a person, you may not fit that test. So this is not cast in bronze yet. We're, we're going to have to wait and see what happens, uh, but it is coming soon. New Jersey record keeping requirements changed and the blue part there, that's a link. It will, you, if when you click on it, it'll take you to the list of all of the items that need to be kept um, for a variety of all of these items listed here you need to have record keeping of and most i would think that most of the clients that i know and, and most of you based on on being connected to njbia you're doing this you have this information you're gonna need to have the record keeping more organized now as a result of it because wage and hour is starting to have this conversation because of remote workers to understand do you have all the details on this person you know, the social security number, we've got the New Jersey, new driver's license, the ID. These are conversations that are all kind of going on at once. And so we've got to be prepared for that. Your handbook. Some of the biggest things that I have read um, are about your disclaimers. Um, Paul versus Plainfield, uh, what they did wrong, unfortunately for them was they said that, you know, this handbook is, a, is in no means a contract. And what happened was um, Paul was leaving the organization. Um, he was terminated. He wanted his time, his accrued time off their municipality. He sued to get that and was able to prove or sway that the way the handbook was written, the disclaimer did not cover accrued time that he would have been owed and they had to pay all of his time out, which was a significant chunk. You have to go back, go to legal, call them. I know it's gonna cost you money, but make sure you're covering yourself with those disclaimers. You don't wanna be spending more money than, than you know, on, legal, on legal fees to go to court. Uh, make sure you have a very up-to-date anti-discrimination and harassment policy. Uh, why? Because this is, a huge issue right now across the country. It's a big buzzword. People are having these conversations. My 15 year old is having these conversations because it is a topic at school now, which I don't, not sure why it is, but it's there. The second piece to that with anti-discrimination is the dress and grooming policy. Make sure it is not discriminating against one, any other group. Uh, UPS has had to completely change their dress and grooming policy because it could have been found um, to be discriminatory. So if they have to do it, you may have to do it. Take a look and make sure. 
make sure you have a telework policy. Uh, I can only, you know, the one of the big arguments at a certain point was that kids are never going to have a snow day again. They will. The state's not going to let, not let that happen. Teachers want it. The teachers union wants it. Um, for your company, though, your folks may need to work that day, you know, on it. And so you need a telework policy that's going to clearly define if you're allowing that, if you're giving them the day, what are you doing? You know, there. We haven't had snow again in a long time, but it could happen. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hopeful. So, thank you so much for your time. Are there questions that folks have? Thank you. That was a lot of great information. Um, it looks like I think we have time for maybe two questions. So, uh, one question: What is a man-machine relationship? So, the man-machine relationship is actually always kind of been there, right? I'm doing a man-machine relationship right now. I I do things with the computer. I tell it to do stuff. I push buttons, etc. It, we're into that process of taking the next step though. Um, with AI, we're teaching them how to think. So I'm programming something now to do something. And so we're collaborating is more of a sense than me typing, for example. That you're gonna, you have, again, Google is, is one of my big ex examples. Um, talk about any of the latest movies that are out or something that you know, you've seen that you wanna purchase it starts showing up on your Facebook, you know, your Twitter ads, et cetera. The, these machines are working together with us. We're telling them what to go look for sometimes. Thank you. Um, but to that, actually, we are on the 12 o'clock hour now, so it looks like it's time to wrap up. If anybody has additional questions, um, Judy's information is right on that screen. You can go ahead and email her. She'd be happy to answer any questions from today's presentation. Um, so. Uh, thanks again. Don't forget, everybody's going to be receiving a recording of today's webinar as well as the handouts from today's webinar. Um, you should be getting that within the next uh, 48 hours. Also, when you close out, there will be a survey that comes up on your screen that we hope you will fill out so we can understand how to best provide you the information webinar format. Our next event is the Not-for-Profit Council meeting. That's on September 20th at 1 o'clock, so feel free to go to njbia.org backslash events to register for that. So until next time, Judy from Prime Point, this is Amy Music thanking you for being with us today and wishing you a great day. Thank you.